We still have seven years worth of movies to watch this decade. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. Today I'm giving you my top 10 favorite movies of the decade so far. Before I do, be sure to hit the like button, comment down below your favorite movies from the decade so far, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And without further ado, let's get into this thing. So coming in at number 10 for me is actually gonna be an MCU movie, which I know is surprising, but that is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I was thinking back recently on my first experience with this movie and I just had a blast with it, I really did. It's got some of the best action sequences in the entire MCU and it's a really immersive world. I think it's one of the MCU movies that doesn't try and force humor it feels a lot more authentic and I had multiple moments where I was laughing in this film and it introduced the new character of Shung Chi so well. I bought into the father-son dynamic that he has with Wen Wu and it made for a really compelling hero villain story. Ta Lo was just this wonderful fantastical world that we got to visit and while I think it does go a little bit too far overboard at the very end of this movie with the whole dragon showdown, I still admire the hell out of Shung Chi and I'm so excited to see more of this character in the MCU. Number nine on my list is going to be Bullet Train, a movie that I literally can't stop thinking about. I think I've seen it three times now and it's funny because I actually missed this one when it came out in theaters. I just never got around to it for whatever reason, but I watched it on a plane and then I watched it that same weekend after I landed and then I watched the movie not too long ago. This is the kind of movie that we need more of in Hollywood today. It's a star-studded action ensemble movie that's entertaining as hell from start to finish. Lemon and Tangerine absolutely steal the show. I think they're without question one of the best duos in terms of movie duos last year. It's a very simple story, but it's well executed and I just dig the hell out of Bullet Train. Number eight on my list is Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. The fall follow-up movie to Knives Out from 2019. While it's not as good as the first Knives Out in my opinion, it's still pretty damn great. I've actually only seen this movie one time, I've been meaning to rewatch it lately, but it's another one of those star-studded casts and a murder mystery that just kept me on the edge of my seat from start to finish. About 30 minutes in, the movie makes a decision that kind of shook me. Like a certain reveal sort of happened and I was like, where are we going from here? But the structure of this movie reveals itself, we get some flashbacks and everything ended up flowing together seamlessly. I dug the hell out of Glass Onion, Benoit Blanc is a character that I could watch like a 10 film franchise of him just solving these different eccentric murder mysteries. I'm down for it and this is a win in my book. Number seven on my list is perhaps the most divisive movie of the decade and that is Damien Chazelle's Babylon, a movie that I truly love. It clocks in at like three hours and eight minutes and I was just glued to that screen, fully immersed in this story. I love a movie about making movies. That's exactly what Babylon is. Brad Pitt's character is like this washed up actor who can deliver on a scene when he needs to. He very much reminded me of Rick Dalton from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is funny because Brad Pitt is in that movie as Cliff Booth. However, Margaret Robbie steals the show here and it really shines a light on this darker side of Hollywood. I know I've said that a million times when I talk about this movie, but it does a great job of balancing that with showcasing the love that we all have for movies and how impactful they are in our lives. By this point, you should know there's a montage of movies at the end. A lot of people love to make fun of it. Again, I liked it. I know I might be in the minority with that, but Babylon is just my cup of tea. It's one of those Hollywood epic films that I can rewatch every now and then and just truly admire. Damien Chazelle had another massive win here in my opinion. Number six on my list is Pixar's Onward. I feel like this is the most forgotten Pixar movie as well as the most slept on Pixar movie. And I think a lot of that has to do with the timing. This movie came out in March of 2020, just days before the COVID pandemic struck and shut down the entire movie theater industry. Because of that, not a lot of people got to see this movie and it really just was swept under the rug, unfortunately. I was able to see this one in theaters right before COVID hit and I loved it. Like I literally cried in the theater watching it just because of how strong the Brotherhood story is here. The movie has a true sense of adventure as Ian and Barley go on this quest to try and fully bring back their father. There is so much heart here. It's hilarious at times and it genuinely makes me cry at the end when Ian realizes that Barley is like the father figure that he never had in his older brother. It just gets me every time and it is a very slept on Pixar movie that I think years from now people will appreciate more. But if you're an Onward fan, please sound off in the comments down below. It's a top 10 Pixar movie for me. I'll die on that hill. Number five for me is Christopher Nolan's Tenet, another movie that came out in 2020 and underperformed at the box office. But I was able to see this movie opening night and I went back the next day and watched it immediately because I really just needed to process everything again and I was so locked in from start to finish. Ludwig Göransson's score for this movie is literally insane. Like I still listen to it to this day. The track Posterity is my favorite. I'll go for a run or walk or even lift weights. Blasting that, I'll feel like I'm starting to like levitate. <laughs> but the concept of this movie is truly mind-blowing. I won't go too in detail here, but a lot of people were saying this movie is very confusing and they're like, what the hell just happened? But after two watches, I felt as though I fully understood everything. I haven't watched the movie since then. I will watch it again before Oppenheimer comes out later this year, but I just remember being blown away by the highway scene and how it was shot. It looked incredible and Christopher Nolan really pushed the boundaries here for like blockbuster filmmaking. The things that that man just pulls off with a camera, it blows my mind and I can't wait to see what he does in Oppenheimer. Coming in at number four for me is Tick, Tick, Boom, a movie that never 
never fails to inspire me. I've listened to this soundtrack countless times in my car. The song 3090 is just such a bop, but then Louder Than Words hits right in the heart. I could go on and on about how great this soundtrack is, but the movie itself is fantastic as well. Lin-Manuel Miranda directs the hell out of it, but I think Andrew Garfield is the absolute star here who should have won an Oscar as Jonathan Larson. There's multiple moments where I not only tear up watching this movie, but I just feel so much for Jonathan Larson because this is a really relatable story. He's just trying to chase his dreams and make it, and there's so much temptation to just settle, but he wants to push himself and go for what he knows he can achieve. That's very relatable, and I'll rewatch this movie every now and then to remind myself of my dreams and to never give up. Tick, Tick, Boom is a true inspiration in a movie that I will always adore. Coming in at number three for me is going to be Spider-Man No Way Home. We got a little double feature of Andrew Garfield at the four and three spots. Spider-Man No Way Home had to be on this list. It's the movie that I've seen the most times in theaters, coming in at five times in theaters. I think I've seen the movie seven or eight times in total. Probably due for a rewatch again here soon. But Spider-Man No Way Home is a top five, top six MCU movie. It was the most hyped movie arguably ever, right alongside Avengers Endgame, and it delivered on the hype. We got to see all three Spider-Men swinging in action, but it wasn't just about that. The journey that Tom Holland's Peter Parker goes on in this movie is the best thus far that we've seen from him in the MCU. He loses everything. He is in the dumps. He's in hell. But the other Spider-Men come there and they relate to him and they kind of bring him back to the light. It's very uplifting. It's the first time we see Spider-Man in the MCU really suffer loss and have to understand that he has to make sacrifices in order to protect those that he loves. And it's a nostalgia trip if I've ever seen one. Spider-Man Knowing Home is a movie that over time will definitely lose the initial buzz and hype of having all three Spider-Men together. But at its core, it's a movie that I will always love and cherish. My runner-up for my favorite movie of the decade is The Batman. I think this is the definitive best Batman movie and I've said that multiple times and I truly do believe it. We got to see him be the world's greatest detective people. Matt Reeves pulled this thing off. It's a three hour epic. It's dark. It's gritty. It's the Batman that I want to see on the big screen. Paul Dano as the Riddler is creepy as hell and the movie is genuinely terrifying at times. Like the opening kill from Riddler straight out of a horror movie. But what really carries this movie at the end of the day is the score by Michael Giacchino. It is masterful work. It perfectly captures the vibe of Robert Pattinson as Batman. Can't wait for the Batman part two coming October 2025. But my favorite movie of the decade so far and frankly I don't know if it will be topped is Top Gun Maverick. This is the phenomenon from last year that just took the box office by storm, took the world by storm, as Tom Cruise full sent on this movie, and we got to see these actors actually flying in these planes in the most real-life flight movie I've ever seen. The aerial combat sequences are riveting, and it felt like we were in the cockpit with these pilots during the climactic battle scenes, but the characters are far more compelling in this movie than they were in the original Top Gun, and the story's just enthralling. Tom Cruise delivers a killer performance here, especially the scene he has with Iceman. It gets you right in the feels. This movie's just a vibe, especially a summertime vibe. I ain't worried about it right now. I could throw this movie on any day in the summer, hell, any day of the year, and just be entertained, emotionally moved, and blown away by this practical effects extravaganza that's filled with heart, comedic moments, and enthralling scenes. Top Gun Maverick is the movie of the decade so far, and I'm interested to see if anything can top it for me. But those are just my top 10 personal favorite movies of the decade so far. Definitely let me know yours in the comments down below, and be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified for future videos like this one, especially regarding Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania because I have tons of videos coming out next week regarding that as well as some Super Bowl trailer reactions. So lots of content coming very soon. I appreciate you guys showing support lately and until next time, I'll see you guys later.